Well, let me start with a little bit of background. The First Amendment protects people uh, insofar as it allows freedom of speech, and it restricts the state or a state agency from restricting their speech. There's some other protections in there too, but right now, let's just focus on freedom of speech. Many years ago, about 40 or 50 years ago, during the Vietnam War, there was a case where a public school decided, heard that some kids were going to demonstrate against the war by wearing black armbands. And the school decided ahead of time that they weren't going to allow the black armbands to be worn because it was divisive, it could create a controversy and disturbance within the school. So they sent out a, a message saying no black armbands. One young student and her friends, her student's name is Mary Beth Tinker, and that's kind of a famous name. I think she was 13 at the time. She decided, in consultation with the parents, that she believed so strongly in her right to protest against the war that she was going to wear her black armband anyhow. She wore it. She was uh, expelled by the school. And her parents and her sued the school district, saying that she had a First Amendment right of speech to wear that black armband. And the Supreme Court agreed with her. The Supreme Court, in a very famous passage, said that the Constitution does not stop at the schoolhouse door. <clears throat> and she had a right of expression so long as the expression did not disrupt the school environment or interfere with the rights of other students, she had a right of speech, and they looked at that armband as basically being conduct that is the same as speech. Years later, to get more directly to the question, we had two cases that arose when some students on their own time, at home, using their own computers, made some fake profiles of their principals in two separate cases. In one case, they uh, called Leishak, which was a case where I was, I was we, were, we were both involved in both cases. It's an opinion that I wrote. Uh, he used his grandmother's computer at home and made a very derogatory uh, fake profile of his principal. And in the other case, the same thing happened. They made a very derogatory fake profile of uh, the principal and the principal's uh, wife, who was a teacher at school. Word of these profiles leaked into the school because students found out the profiles were there and they were discussed in school. And in both cases, the students were disciplined. And in both cases, the parents and the students sued the school saying, I have a right to make these profiles and post them online. You can't suspend me or discipline me for it. And in both cases, we agreed. The, the hook there is, though, that the uh, conduct that was done off campus, out of the school district, did not disrupt the school environment. There was nothing on the record to show that what the kids did at home using their own computer at night on their own time in any way disrupted school activity. Had it disrupted the school activity, it would have been a very different decision. But we held absent that disruption in school, students had a First Amendment right of speech to create these, um, you can call them parodies, they're certainly offensive and insulting profiles of their principles. It was the kind of profile that anyone looking at it would have known this is not really the principal's own profile. This is either some kind of parody or slander, or however you want to label it. But the student had a right to do that. No school facilities were involved. That's just uh, fascinating, uh, Chief Judge McGee. And tell us, we know that lower courts sometimes disagree about these issues. Have some courts held that even stuff that you post at home can be punished at school if you should expect that it causes disruption? They, they have, the, the key there is a reasonable expectation of disruption. And, and where the courts seem to disagree is where you draw that line. <clears throat> if there is a reasonable expectation of disruption, some courts have held that that's enough to discipline the students for their uh, activity at home, even though it's First Amendment activity. Other courts have held you can't act upon a reasonable expectation of disruption you wait until there is disruption, and then you punish that disruption. But you don't stop the kids. It's called a preemptive, um, uh, I'm blocking that word. <laughs> That's right. Prior restraint. Prior restraint. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Prior restraint. You can't uh, create a prior restraint where you prevent speech before the speech. You've got to allow, some courts have held you've got to allow the student to speak, run the risk of the disruption, and then based upon that disruption, if it occurs, you can then discipline perhaps the student who caused the disruption as well as the students in school who create the disruption. In our court, we have not held that way. We have held that if there is disruption, you can punish the student where the student does something where there is a reasonable risk of disruption, but we've not seen that case yet. In neither case we had was there a reasonable risk of disruption inside the school.